All right, hey AP Chemistry. So I'm gonna walk you through your setup for today. Today we're gonna be focusing on understanding the burette. So you're gonna have your own burette lab practical where I'm gonna see whether or not you could read the measurements from the burette. So you're gonna need a couple of things. You're gonna need a ring stand, long stem glass funnel. You're gonna have a big beaker and a small beaker. It doesn't matter how much you put in there, um, but just a small beaker of water and then a bigger beaker. And then a burette clamp and then your burette. So one of the first things you're gonna do, and you can do this as you're watching me, is clamp on your burette stand to the ring stand. So this is known as a burette clamp. So I'm putting it on, and I'm gonna like clamp it up at the top. So like basically, as you'll see, um, I could twist it and then it tightens onto the ring stand itself. Then, if you could see, this, the middle metal part of this burette clamp can open up and that's where you're going to put your burette straight through the middle part and down through the side of the top and bottom so I open up the middle and it's better if you have two people but I open up the middle and I'm going to slide this down through the burette clamp and it's going to clamp on the burette nice and tight for any experiment so I got stuck because I'm trying to talk and explain at the same time but I could get this down there we go all right, this came off, but that's okay. Screw back on. All right, and so now I have my burette into the clamp, like so. And if you could read or see on the clamp, at the top I have zero, and I want you to record this in a notebook or a piece of paper. At the top I have zero, zero, zero. You should be able to read it to about two decimal places. I'm gonna make a note that you should be able to read two decimal places for the burette. And I'm going to ask you to read that for your lab practical. Um, and so at the top it's zero, and then all the way at the bottom is about is 50, 50 50.00. Now you never want the volume of liquid that you have in here to go lower than 50, because then I don't know the volume. You also don't want it to go above zero, because then I don't know the volume. You're also going to see on the side here, there's this handle thing. It's called the stopcock. I have it drawn on, on my diagram here. If the stopcock is facing towards you, it's closed. If it's up and down, it's open. So I'm gonna close it right now. I'm gonna put it, push this up a little bit and I'm gonna put my bigger beaker underneath. The bigger beaker underneath is to trap any liquid that kind of falls through. I'm gonna take my funnel. I'm gonna put my funnel through the top and I'm gonna pour liquid into my burette. So the best thing you could do, and Eventually, you're gonna to have to have goggles on. Right now, I'm working with water, but if I'm working with acids and bases, I don't need goggles. Um, if I, I'm just working with water, I'm okay with this. So I'm gonna pour this through. And when we do have acids and bases, you are gonna be making sure that you wear goggles. And notice how I filled it all the way up to the top, and I have some liquid in my funnel. If you can't see it, I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. I have some liquid all the way up in my funnel, and if I pick it up, it's gonna overflow and it's overflowing through the side. You don't want that to happen when we're working with acids and bases. I'm gonna put that on the side here. I'm gonna try and release it so it, it goes to about the zero mark. If you open this, if you turn the sopcock upwards, I could release some of the liquid into the beaker. I'm gonna get it to about the zero mark, okay? Right now, and I'm gonna move it over, I have the liquid to approximately the zero mark. You gotta read the meniscus. You probably can't read that, but it's about zero. When you read the curvature of the meniscus, the bottom of the curvature is the mark, the reading that I make. Okay. Now, something to know, and I have about, uh, I'm gonna say I have liquid all the way up to here. Right now I have water all the way up to the top mark. Okay. I'm gonna pour some of this back into here, doesn't matter. I could open up the stock cock and release some of the liquid. Right now, I'm gonna read my initial reading. I'm gonna say initial reading, and I'd like you all to do this too, is approximately 0, 0.00 milliliters, because I should be able to read to two decimal places on the burette. I'm gonna release some liquid all right, I'm bringing it all the way down to 
let's say right here, okay? If I were to read where the meniscus is, I'm reading downward, I have it at approximately 14.50 milliliters. Your lab practical today, you're gonna have to be able to read the burette and give me that measurement and it has to match within significant figures of my measurement. So my final reading right now is 14.50 milliliters. If I wanna know how much liquid dropped into here, the volume is gonna be final minus initial volume. And so if I pour some of the liquid down, I probably went down here a bit and it went to 14.50 milliliters. I mean, I know I started at zero, but what if I don't start at zero and that's gonna be the next one. If I wanna know my volume, it's gonna be 14.50 milliliters minus 0, 0.00 milliliters. Now, remember for significant figures, oh, you can't see that with the ring stand, I'm sorry. For significant figures, if I'm doing addition and subtraction with sig figs, I leave it with the least amount of decimal places. So I'm gonna say addition or subtraction, least number of decimal places is my sig figs. So make sure you write that down. This showed up on a free response question earlier in the year. This was on the AP exam in 2019, last year, where students had to read a burette and a lot of students got points taken off because they did not remember that I do addition and subtraction with sig figs where I use the least number of decimal places. It's not the least number of sig figs, it's decimal places. Both of these numbers, I force them and they will have two decimal places. So if I do 14.5 minus zero, I have 14.50 milliliters of water. Now, what if I start at 14.5? So what, I'm gonna erase this. I know I poured 14.5 milliliters into here. Let's say now I'm at 14.5. Let's say that's my initial reading now. I'm at 14.50 milliliters and I drop some more liquid into my beaker. So I'm gonna release some. I'm gonna drop some. I'm just gonna drop a little bit. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna tell me what your measurements are. Now I get it to about here. Now I'm gonna read this measurement. If I read this measurement, I'm getting, and remember we read down, I'm getting 23, 24, one, looks like it's like 24.15. Looks like I'm at 24.15 milliliters. Now remember, two decimal places. For your lab practical, I'm gonna be asking you to measure with two decimal places. When I ask you, I'm not gonna say, hey, make sure it's in two decimal places. I'm gonna say, what's the measurement? So we need two decimal places in the measurement. And so now, if I want the volume that I dripped into there, it's gonna be the final minus initial. So I'm gonna have 24.15 milliliters minus 14.50 milliliters. Two decimal places, two decimal places. I need to have two decimal places in my answer. So 24.15 minus 14.50, and I get 9.65 milliliters of water that I dripped into here. So for class today, when you're working with the burette, practice making some measurements with somebody else and see if they get the same value as you. And then practice doing at least maybe five to eight volume measurements. Measurements and volume calculations. Because this is very important for us to do our titrations. We're gonna be dropping eventually an acid, um, a base into an acid, and I need to know how much of that volume is dropped into there. So for the majority of class, you're gonna be on a sheet of paper writing your burette lab practical, and then I'm gonna come around and check and see if you could take the measurements um, and calculate how much volume dripped into there, and then I'm gonna do the measurements too. All right, so this is how you set up for using the burette.